first time uh, for my featured artist of the week, uh, and this week it's the awesome uh, Lux Lane, and uh, in the studio I've got with me uh, Pete Moore. How are you doing, Pete? Okay? How are you doing, Kenny? All right? How's everyone at Loop Radio? Great to yeah, be here. we're great. <laughs> it's glad, we, I tell you what, I'm glad you came, because otherwise I'd be talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wouldn't be the best interview in the world. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> So it's been quite it's been quite a good uh, been quite a good year for you this year, Lux Lane. How, how did the band get together? Um, it's well, to be honest, um, we've we've had a cracking year, but it, it, uh, the whole thing with Lux Lane started as a as a bit of fun really between a a lot of us got together um, and it it was really just to to put a covers band together and have a bit of fun. Um, a lot a lot of us have been playing with other bands and. And we thought we'd just do something and, and, you know, we would do some different type of covers. Um, and I had sort of been writing music for quite a while and not told anybody or said anything. Um, and we went and recorded a demo of a few different songs, uh, Dell songs and bits and pieces. And we, the guy said, well, you've got three, but you've paid for enough recording time for another two. So I recorded two of my songs as acoustics. Um, I was to the pathway and take me to the edge. Um, and the studio said, I like what you're doing with this cover stuff, but this other stuff, you, you really want to be concentrating on that. So, wow. you know, we went away and had a chat and said, the guy said, have you got any more songs? I said, yeah, I've got about 20. <laughs> so we picked the best 12 and wrote an album and, and said we would release it. And, you know, that would be that. We'd do it as a one-off project and, and walk away. And actually, what happened was we had such a good response to the first album. Uh, you know, we, we recorded it in three days. It really was just a thrown together project. It was just a bit of fun. But actually, we said, you know, there might be something in this. <laughs> there might be something worth doing. So um, we, we, you know, said, well, the guy said, can you write another album? I said, well, I'll give it a go. Um, so I wrote the other the album that we have now. So there's 13 songs on that, or will be when it's completed. We're working our way through it now. But... Yeah, we're, we we kind of took this one a bit more seriously, and we've been sort of recording it professionally now for about the last six months. Um, so yeah, we're we're happy with where it's going, and it's certainly a little bit more professional. But the band started as a bit of a bit of fun, and and we want to keep it that way. But there's a bit more of a serious edge to it now. So you know, hopefully, the the second album will do just you know if it does half as well as the first album did, we'll be happy. So. So that's kind of how the band came to be. So you, you wait till the money starts kicking in, then you have to be serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're still waiting on that one, so we're still smiling at the minute. <laughs> that <laughs> might kick in in a while, but it hasn't kicked in just yet, like so. <laughs> so this first track we're going to play of yours is called "A Million Hours." What, what's the story behind that one? "A Million Hours" is is kind of uh, everything I write. I write from. Um, experience or you know of, of or first-hand experience or you know someone i know has went through it and a million hours is is kind of um when you're in a relationship and i suppose you could you could say this was <laughs> this is my first wife syndrome um when both of us had realized that uh, everything was gone and we'd thought about it and we'd argued about it and there was just you know we knew what what was going to happen but it just it was taking forever for it to end and and it kind of this was the song that came out. It, it, it's kind of a song of saying, well, we kind of know, but who's going to say, you know, this is over? So it's quite a nice little song and it has a nice little melody, but actually the, there's quite a bit of a heartache in it. But it's the realisation where two people just go, enough's enough, really. So that's the inspiration you me, behind that. You got me in tears here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. This is, this is the soft, this is the soft luck slaying, so... <laughs> Wait till you get to so the edge. I'll tell you what that's about. <laughs> this is uh, this is a million hours by the awesome Luck Lane.
That's a million hours there, uh, the first track by my featured artist of the week, the awesome Lux Lane, uh, and we've got uh, Pete Moore in the uh, in the studio with us tonight. How are you doing, Pete? You still there? Yeah, still here, hanging on, hanging on. Still hanging <laughs> on. So, um, your good friend, uh, Billy Brown, he told me that you were related to Gary Moore, is that right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if it come from Billy, it's got to be true, yeah. <laughs> It's about as true as what Wikipedia would say about me, yeah. I'm surprised Billy said something that productive and nice, to be honest. Well, no, well there was a... Gary Moore, unfortunately. There was, a, there was a caveat to that, but I won't tell you what that was. Yeah, I'm sure there was with Billy, yeah. <laughs> so, um, have you got plans for the summer, or what, what's going on with the band in the summer, or are you, are you still doing your album? We're still, um, we're still working on the album. Um, we have a little break, because... Um, it came to about Christmas time and everybody had had enough and these guys the guys still have little bits of their own projects going on and, and bits and pieces like that. So it, it was getting to the point where we were saturated with the album and, and we were, we were working on three tracks at, at one time and um, the guys were getting a little bit sort of, you know, uh, it was becoming a bit non-productive. So we had a, a couple of months off, which is something that we weren't planning to do. But actually, I think it's been a, a massive help um, because mm. the guys have come back and they're absolutely busting. You know, the, the ideas are coming up with now, and, and, and when you know you sit down and you work with them, it's it's you know it's, in, it's invigorated the whole process again. So um, so it was good to take that little bit of time off. So we had originally looked at an April um, release for the album, but now we've moved it to September. And the reason being is we. You know, we have our own label. We're an independent artist. We don't have. We're not on timelines or schedules. So, we want to get it right and, and release it when it's ready, rather than rush it and release something that we're not happy with. So, um, yeah, we we're still working on it, and, and that's the main focus at the moment. So, yeah, that's brilliant. Can you tell me a little bit about the the guys in the band and who they are and what they do? Yeah, there's um, Steve Kearney's the uh, the singer. Um, Basically, when we first got the, 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 the band together, um, the first vocalist was, uh, he was a lovely guy, but it, it just wasn't working with him, it wasn't, it wasn't right, and we spent six months, I spent six months looking for a singer, and we couldn't find a singer anywhere, and uh, a mate of mine came to a barbecue, um, and uh, he said, there's a guy who's just moved across the road, he says he's got a guitar, um, and he wants to come and bring you know tonight and play at the barbecue, I said, yeah, tell him to come along. And it was Steve Kearney, and he started singing, and, and that was that. It was, boom, this guy is, this is who we've been looking for. And he was living six doors away for the last six months, so. Brilliant. <laughs> Who's to show you? But, um, but he's the singer, he's brilliant. Uh, Stevie Potter's the lead guitarist. He's um, he, he comes up with all these little signature riffs and all the little bits and pieces, and, and his lead work's fantastic. He's such a creative guy. Um, you know, he, he definitely brings a, an awful lot to it. Um, you know, creative wise, he's, he's fantastic. Dan Dan Stimson, he's the, the bass player. Um, again, fantastic. He's he he can play a lead, he can play a rhythm. He comes up with little bits and pieces, and we've we've actually we've, we've written some bass driven songs for him, so we can showcase him a bit. Um, and they're coming out quite soon. 
um, Kenny um, Douglas, Joe Douglas, he's uh, he's a rhythm guitarist, but he also plays keyboards. He played piano on a million hours, um, and he does the backing and vocals. Um, top guy. He's been in, in some decent bands in the past, really good bands. So he's come back to the music scene after a bit of a break. Um, Pete King's a drummer. Um, he got um, drafted into the band from um, Stevie Parr. They've worked together for a while. And he is phenomenally, you know, how hard he hits them and, and what he comes up with is, is you know, tremendous. So uh, we're very, very lucky to get him. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that we have is uh, our sound engineer, Mikey, Mikey Gill. Um, and he's been with us from the start. And he really does have a massive influence. He goes to the rehearsals with the band and, he, and he'll, he'll sit down and he'll say, yes, do this, do that, try this. So he's not someone who you just turn up at a, a studio and say, okay, record this, and you will record that, press record. He'll go, no, 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 try this, and he'll get Steve in a room, and he'll say, no, keep keep going, keep going, try a different lead, no, half of that lead, put that together. And and he works with everybody, and he, and he gets the best out of everybody, and that's why we've taken the time this time around, because I think when we're all together and working as a team, we do get much better results, and instead of rushing it, it it's, it's better just taking our time. So I'm very, very, very blessed to have the guys around me that I have because they're all much better uh, talented people than I am <laughs> to be honest so um, I'm, 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 I'm very lucky in that way so it's a bit like the people on Luke Radio I'm very lucky too <laughs> yeah you have to have good people around you because that's where you can hide isn't it so Absolutely. <laughs> so this next track is uh, Take Me to the Edge and you said there's a bit of a story behind this one is that right well yeah it's um this one's <laughs> the complete opposite of um of uh, the other one this was off the first album um and this was one of the first ones that, that i'd written um and it's about a friend of mine let's say um who was doing something naughty with uh one of his friends uh partners <laughs> and um it was kind of the fact that he knew he shouldn't be doing what he was doing but he couldn't stop himself doing it um, and kind of, he, you know, when you when you, you listen to the lyrics, it's it's very evident that he doesn't want to be doing what he's doing, but he just can't stop himself. Um, so this friend of mine, um, I think he learned his lesson um, a lot after this, but he was definitely the inspiration for the song. And that's about uh, being naughty, really. <laughs> being naughty with someone you shouldn't be being naughty with. But... Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it, it got a lot of a lot of feedback on this. Um, uh, some very good feedback, and, and we done a little video for it because um, it, it, a lot of people liked it. It's quite a long track, but we kept it that way because it, we felt if we shortened it, it would take away from the track. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's about it's about being a bit naughty. <laughs>
That's the uncut version of uh, Take Me to the Edge by the awesome Loxlane. Loxlane? No, Luxlane, my uh, featured artist of the week uh, here on LukeRadio.net. And uh, we've still got Pete, uh, Pete Moore here live in the studio with us. So, Pete, um, what's, um, what's this, next, uh, this next track about? It's the story of our lives, and it's the, uh, it's the theme tune or the, the title track of your album. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. It's the, um, the album should be out in September, um, and uh, this, this is the title track. And it was kind of a song when I was writing it. Um, it it's one of those songs when you, when you start writing it, you, you just get a certain feel about it. And you think this is this is something that is not special, but you, you it kind of writes itself. You start writing it, and it, and it's done in no time whatsoever. And this and this was the case with this. And it was it started off. But what what it's about really is um, it's about how people view you and how they see you. And, and people make um, comments about you, or they they you know they think they know all about you, and they don't, and, and they really don't know what's going on. And you know the person that you put yourself out on Facebook or social media, they actually don't know the real you underneath it because they never get to see it. So it's a, it was kind of, that's what the feeling was behind it. And, um, you know, the, the lyrics are very much a case of, uh, you know, opposites. You know, you can you can win and, you know, still be defeated. You know, you can you can do, you think you're doing well and, and you're really not, or you think you're not doing well and you, and you are. Um, and it was kind of that, that that was the theme behind it. Um, when I sent it down to Stevie Potter, um, he came up with the original little rift, and he said, "Do you know?" He says, "It feels like there should be something like a radio playing in the background of the intro." And he sent me it back with, and I think it was the moon landings, the Apollo moon landings. And he said, "You know, just forget about what it is, but can you hear that?" And I said, yeah. "Yeah, I really like that." So we sat down and we thought, "What can we come up with?" And and actually, we thought, "Well." who's famous and has sort of, you know, been the opposite of what he should have been. Um, it was the Bill Clinton one. It was where Kenny, he it was Kenny <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically lied through his teeth. <laughs> um, and we thought, well, it's that's got that. <laughs> So he said, yeah, that's got to go on it. So it's, it's kind of him saying, you know, and, and he actually admits it, because if you listen closely in the thing, it says, uh, I never asked anyone to lie, not a single time, which actually implies that there was more than once. So we thought that was quite funny, um, but it, it's quite a serious song. But it kind of says, well, we thought this guy was something, and he wasn't. He was something else, and, and it, it's kind of like that. You think you know who you're dealing with, and, and, and actually you don't. So that's kind of what the song's about. So. And what an amazing song to have on Independence Day with Bill Clinton there. So, so tell me, you don't, um, you don't, uh, you, you, you haven't got, you, you haven't got, a, you haven't got a, a deal with the labels. You, you put your own stuff out. So how do you, how do you uh, market your stuff? Uh, well, basically, we've um, we, when we started, we wanted to be completely independent, completely self-sufficient. So, um, I've got my own record label, which is uh, EM Music, which was named after my daughter, Erin May. So it's Erin May okay. Music, and um, so it's M Music. Um, but uh, we we started with that because we thought, well, if we're going to go and do this, we might as well do it ourselves. And we we enlisted the help of. The videos that we had, the original videos from the original guys in the band, they were shot by a friend of mine that I used to work with years ago. Uh, he's a photographer and he, and, he, and he does this for festivals and he came and shot the videos for us, which was absolutely brilliant because you're working with, with friends. Um, friends of mine built the website and uh, all the rest of it. So it was, it was very much a big effort from, from everyone together. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was great to get everybody involved in the project and yeah so um yeah it's it's a it's been a it's been a, a good ride it's been a, a very very emotional time but it's it's um yeah a roller coaster really but we wanted to we wanted to make sure we were independent so we we had um we have at the moment we're working with eagle eye promotions um which is part of the uh, 365 radio network um and they have basically um, they're being brilliant with us, and they're giving us a massive amount of play in America. Um, and uh, Jeff uh, Hensley um, and Sully McFly, brilliant people, um, and uh, kind of they're the, the first lot that we've we've really worked with in a, in a PR role up until that point. It's kind of really been ourselves. 
So um, you know, we're still we're still plodding on ourselves, but they're they're being a massive help. And and again, stations like yourself and you know things like tonight, you know, you can't you can't buy that kind of publicity and, and PR. It's it's brilliant to be able to to. Well, you, to speak you on the radio station, you know, it's it's just great to be able to speak directly to people who you know are listening to your music and say, you know, well, thank you, thank you for liking it, and thank you for listening, um, and and again to the, to yourselves, thank you for playing us, you know. No, so. pleasure. Well, we we love to play, we love to play uh, quality music, and that's what you give us. So this is um, this is a story of our lives from uh, from Lux Lane. And I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work.
That's the awesome Lux Lane there and the story of my love. <laughs> Sorry, somebody's lives. Whose lives was it? Their lives, yes. Our lives. Yeah, your lives. Um, <laughs> whose lives was it, Pete? It's the story of our lives, but it couldn't be anybody's really. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you thank you for joining me uh, tonight uh, on the uh, Upload Show. You're my very first uh, live interview, so um, you've broken me in very nicely. Thank you very much. Thanks thanks for the cherry, Kenny. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on your next it's been cake, a privilege mate. and a pleasure, as I've said to many. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been awesome, and, we, and we, we, we love the support that you give us on Twitter and on Facebook, and uh, we just hope you go from strength to strength, and you keep loving what you're doing and uh, making brilliant music. Well, thank you very much, and it's uh, and, and again, thanks to Late Radio for, for looking after us so well. You've been absolutely brilliant, and, um, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep supporting you as long as we can, as long as you want to keep playing us, so... Oh, so we, we want to keep playing you. This is my uh, my special guest tonight, the awesome uh, Pete Moore. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>